New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, give it up, my bro, Fernando Mateo. Grab the microphone, pull it close, man. You don't do you do a lot of talking, but I don't know if you do a lot of interview. <laughs> I do once in a while. Yeah, um, so this is the first time I've had you on my show, and I've known you for over a decade. Uh, I met you uh, probably oh, 2003. Probably. Uptown, uh, on Dykeman. We thought you were Dominican. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. Believable. It's believable. <laughs> it works. Um, but, I, you know, we was just, it was, it was popping, man. La Marina, man. We used to go out there. You get, you know, a to-go plate. You get some Maduros. You get some rice. We was hanging out. It was before La Marina was this beautiful destination that it is today. It was before the gentrifiers came in. Yeah. People that... Uh, identify an area that they can make a lot of money in. Mm -hmm. They come in cheap. They want to change it. They join the community boards. They organize. Mm -hmm. And they're smart as hell. They're educated. And while we're busy working, they're busy planning on how they're going to make their money and how they're going to get you out. That's but, really what it's all about. But you helped create an atmosphere post, I mean, if anybody was uptown in the 90s, we know what Dykeman was in the 90s. It was, and even it, in the early 2000s. It was, it was, it was prostitution, it was drugs, rough. junkies, it was rough. everything. It was rough. Yeah. But you participated in, in other business owners that were from that community and turning that into a, a, a destination for shopping, restaurant, nightlife, right? My, my heart bleeds for the business owners on Dykeman Street between Broadway and La Marina. These people have borrowed money. They, they're in debt most of, the, most of the year until the summertime comes and they come out of debt because people you know, go to the marina, yep. so they stop at their places. But these people risk their lives. They risk everything. They borrow from everybody to start their small business. And the city has no consideration for small business. That's why there are so many empty stores in New York. People don't want to open up, take a risk, put a million dollars, two million dollars, three million dollars into a location. And then well, NYPD, FDNY, NY, DOB, yeah, for you. Health Department, uh, every, any agency could come and shut you down. And that is... Well, let's unpack it a little bit more because La Marina is... You're not involved in it. What's happening with La Marina? Uh, La Marina, I decided to walk away from it personally because there were there were too many UEs in the in the area. And UEs are unknown enemies that target me because I'm a big target. You know, they they figured they could use me and and basically say to people, oh, he's getting away with everything because he's Fernando Mateo. He's getting away with this because he's de Blasio's friend. Or he raised money for de Blasio. And they create stories that are lies. And unfortunately, I'm not a journalist. I don't have a pen. I don't, I can't, I don't have a radio show. I can't write uh, an article in the New York Times that's a credible paper or in the Daily News. So we have to live with the New York Post that all they do is sensationalize and tear down anyone mm -hmm. in our community that is successful. And so what is ha what happened to La Marina? What was going cuz it just like any big club, right? You're going to have people you have people drinking, there's things that happen. Hey bro, listen. So but what what happened? No, nothing happened at La Marina. People made things up to shut the marina down because the gentrifiers, the people that invested in the community and want a big return back are very smart. They criminalize the 311 system. They know that when you dial 311, it gets recorded at your local precinct. And your commanding officer at the precinct, rather than finding out what's going on and where these calls are coming from, they come down on you. Because if they don't, when they go to Comstat at NYPD every week, they get nailed and hammered right, by well, the by the police department. Well, all right, so let me yeah. stop right there. So we're not moving too fast. So you call. So anybody in a community calls three one one. So that's people the who worst live, thing for a business. People who yeah. live or maybe not even live over there because you don't know where the calls are coming from. Exactly. And what, call, were, some, what were some of these complaints? Um, for example, uh, someone called in November and complained that there was too much noise coming out of La Marina. We shut. We close at the end of September. So when the police went there, the place was closed. Someone called and said that there, someone was 
had a hostage in La Marina. So now you get 20 police cars. They come in, running, rushing in the middle of, uh, of people having dinner to realize that it was a hoax. People call and, and lie because they want to get attention to La Marina so that then they can complain about it. And, and everything was stacked up. It was all, listen, we got, when we were shut down, which I consider, I wasn't here, otherwise I would have been arrested. I was not going to allow anyone to shut my business down, a business that I put $3 million of my money, my hard-earned money. I had to earn $6 million to keep three, and I put it in there for someone to come and shut my business down for no good reason. Can you imagine the uh, the... SLA issuing you issuing you a summons or fine the state? the state liquor authority issuing right. you a summons because you had birthday candles in a rack. When it's your birthday, people bring um bring the the sparklers and yeah. sing happy birthday. It said birthday candles. They gave us five fines, illegal storage of of um fireworks, potential sales of fireworks. Um Everything that had to do with fireworks, we got a ticket for. Just they, for having sparklers. Just, just for, for having sparklers, okay? Um, extinguishers, fire extinguishers. They gave us five summonses for fire extinguishers, for example. Because, because instead they of weren't them, in the right place. No, no. no they, instead of them being three inches off the ground, they were two and a half inches off the ground. You know, they gave us tickets for... There was a lady that was bringing in a, a, a small bottle of alcohol in her pocketbook. Security confiscated it at the door, put it on the table. A busboy took it and ran it and put it by the garbage. SLA came and said, you're selling illegal alcohol. We said, are you kidding me? We have $500,000 worth of alcohol in our cages. Look at everything that we have. Here are all our receipts. Gave us five fines, illegal possession of, of, uh, of illegal liquor, Possibly, possible sales of illegal, you know, so they stacked up 70 fines. You know the marina, you've been there. Yeah. The marina is a huge place. The kitchen is in one area. The offices are 500 feet away from the dining area. Mm -hmm. For six years, we got A's. For six years, we were impeccable. For six years, we never got a summons, ever. For six years, everyone loved us. Unfortunately, a commanding officer, Dominican, by the way, came in, wants promotion, boom, started hitting us for everything. In one year, we stacked up summonses that we had never, ever seen in our lives. And the, what helps the, the PD is the State Liquor Authority. They listen to whatever PD says in yeah. order to... You beat it in criminal court, but then when you go to their court, you get slammed That's with right. everything. And so, the head of the State Liquor Commission, I've actually... Um, I've said his name on the show. We tried to have him up. Um, he, I wanted to have him up because... Not very much that he'll come here. He won't come. Uh, and I've even encouraged people to go to the hearings that they have at the State Liquor Commission because uh, of how they shut down lust over in listen, Brooklyn. Li listen, it was, it was an abuse of power, what they did to him, abuse of power, what they did to me, abuse of power. The abuse of power that is used against small businesses like us is just... Un it, it's unacceptable. It's, I can't find, I'm lost, I'm lost for words. You've heard of Tavern on the Green. Of course. Yeah. Tavern on the Green, the city gave the concessionaire, because we are concessionaires, yeah. gave them tens of millions of dollars. To build that out. To build it out. Yeah. They didn't give us a dime. But they you improved the waterfront up there. We, oh, we did everything. We, we converted a place that had no water, no electric, no sewer, um, no anything. We, I, I worked, Ebro, I'm a worker. I've been working since, uh, I dropped out of school at 14. I've been busting my ass for se since I was 17 years old. I got married when I was 17, and I, became, I sacrificed my, my childhood to be a man. I worked 18 hours a day, seven days a week, physically to build La Marina, to build a place for us for our communities, you had celebrities, movie stars, hip hop artists, army athletes, everyone going there, and and people, the gentrifiers started hating it. 
they started complaining about our parking. We they about valet parking. Right. They took it away from us. Wow. They took valet parking. If you have a wedding and you can't park your car, what happens? Taxi cabs that were dropping people off were getting tickets. I had to walk a half a mile to get to my business because every weekend NYPD would shut every vessel, every every street from Riverside yep. coming off the highway yep. all the way to Broadway, all the way across. You could not get to the Dykeman Strip by car if you paid. Wow. They had... They had dozens. I have videos. Well, that's one of the reasons I stopped people. coming because it was like a trap. You, it, it was right. I stopped coming to La Marina because when you got off the West Side Highway, there was no way to get there. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't, I remember. And then I you're stuck in traffic. They're pulling people over. They, everybody's getting checked. It was like I'm not going it, through this to have Ebro, a good night. That's I begged, incredible. I begged the city. I begged PD. I met with the higher ups at PD. I said, guys, you're putting me out of business. People can't get here. Help us. Help us. I met with all the chiefs at one police plaza. After that, it, it got worse. Then the revenge came. Because you know what? I respect and I love the men in blue. You know, I have relatives that are cops. You know, I respect law enforcement. But don't mess with them. Because if you do... It, it's the biggest it, gang it, in the city. My man, it, in the world. You know, you're, you're never going to get out of it. And after that... Everything came down. Listen, all I've done in this city, I've made a lot of money. I'm not a poor man, but I've given my share back to my community. In 89 and 90 and 91, I started a program at Rikers Island to teach, train, and, and find jobs. And coming into this building brought tears to my eyes. There was a guy in the lobby that called me over. He says, you coming up to the union? I said, no, I'm going up to Hot 97. I, I was a member of the... Carpenters and Carpet Layers Union for many, many years. I got kids coming out of Rikers Island, jobs in the unions, electrical union, carpenters union, you know, for years. So let me ask you something. Do you feel like it, it, what I hear you saying is that you're uh, now walking away from La Marina and you feel like you were personally attacked and pushed out. That's what I'm hearing Absol you say. Abs ab no question about it. Was it personal? It was or, personal. It wasn't also just racist and people didn't want the people who were there to be there you, you know you kept mentioning the gentrifiers yeah, yeah. that's why i kept be thinking they just didn't want those people there peter i'll tell you i grew up never in my mind i grew up in boarding schools till i dropped out of school and i never realized or understood racism i always said racism starts in one's mind Okay, I did some of the biggest jobs in New York and I competed against the biggest Jewish firms, white firms, and I was awarded the contracts because I was the best at what I did. So I never was affected by racism until this. now, until what I see now, the hatred. When you know someone well, doesn't like you, hey, you, you can, you well, know Well, what's it going is. on in Dykeman is deeper than that, right? Because it's not just, it is skin color. But it's also, because it's not just La Marina that's getting shut down. There's every, a lot of clubs up there. Understand, when, when a commanding officer of a precinct wants to be promoted, he has to show his higher-ups that he is... I went through five, I'm, I'm sorry, through four police commanders. Three of them being Italian and one of them being Puerto Rican. And we never had a problem. They worked with us. They helped us. They taught us. They educated us. We worked together. They never shut down a street. They never shut us down. They never closed. Contrary, they said, you've made this area safer. Because when there are people around, there's less crime. You got to love And when people arena. are making money, there's less crime. He wrote, right. You go to any New York City concession that's... 95% of them are owned by white folks, okay? I'm not being racist by saying white folks. That's fact. I'm saying, fact. you know, they're owned by white folks. Guess what? You go to those concessions, the sidewalks are impeccable. The streets are lit up. The grass, the flowers are beautiful. Parks Department maintains everything beautifully. You go to La Marina, and all the sidewalks are cracked for six years that we've been there. It's disgusting, the overgrowth of, of the trees and the grass bleeding onto the sidewalk. There's a broken sewer pipe 
200 feet before you get to La Marina yeah, there is. that's been broken for six years. Yeah. You know, you have a bridge because you have the overpath. That's right. That overpath is dark. You go, you go to the Columbia University area or other concessions, they light everything up beautifully. They did not help us at all. I feel bad for my partners that are, that are still struggling to get back the liquor license. Why they you took know, the liquor license? They, they took it because we employed, by the way, we created over 300 jobs. And if you've been to La Marina yeah. and you've been there, everyone that we employed was a person of color. That's right. And people from the community. And from the neighborhood. And, and from the neighborhood. Guess what? There was one guy that, we ha that was a bartender. Guy's poor. For some reason or another, he decided to sell drugs. How much drugs? I have no idea. Nobody knows. How the hell do I know that one employee out of 300 employees is selling marijuana or selling pills or selling whatever at La Marina? Unless, you, unless he gets busted. And then I realize it. That's exactly what happened. We were blamed. You know, when, when a cop gets accused of sexual harassment or this or that or whatever, do they shut the police department down? Yeah, the whole down? thing doesn't get shut down. Exactly. <laughs> they get, you know, when a you'll fire, be lucky if they prosecute the one. Yeah, mm. you, you know, so you, what happens here... Dude, let me, let that, me, let, let's... The neighborhood's changing. The property value's going up. People are buying property. Uh, uh, there was a video that went out... Um, Maybe a year ago, remember the white supremacist group that was walking ah, yes, through the yes, park yes, up yes, there yes, and yes. chanting like some yeah, real yeah, yeah. white nationalist rhetoric walking through uh, yeah, Dykeman Park. In Inwood, yeah, yeah. Inwood yeah. Park up there. Um, so, uh, Mateo, you got all of these things happening. Do you believe that these people who are coming in and buying up the property who want this prime real estate are not only uh, on the community boards but also financing and padding the pockets of politicians uh, police officers, things like that, to get community things out of there so they could turn the community into something I else. can't make any accusations. Um, I wish that I could. I wish that, you know, I, I, I could go out there and hire a private investigator and pay him half a million dollars to really crack down on stuff, but I'm not willing and able to do that right now because I've just lost $3 million. People think that La Marina, because there are thousands of people going there every week, think that we're making a, a ton of money. You know, what? High, man. You, you know what? In, in six years that we've been there, I haven't gotten back a quarter of my investment. You know, it's people assume that certain things that are just not true. And the truth of the matter is that it's public record. You'll see how much we've made. You'll see how much we've put back. Every year, if we made half a million dollars for six years, it's a lot shared, it, shared by four people. OK, so we're talking about pennies on the dollar on, on return of, of your money. <laughs> but what hurts the most here is the lack of protection from the po local politicians. The well, lack that's, of uh, Idanis Rodriguez. Idanis, don't speak to me about him. I don't want to hear his name. I, don't, I really don't care to know him. It's like I, I am so afraid. He's from the community, but people have said he's turned his back on it. We had I, him up here. I, I've, 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 I can tell you one thing. I have shied away from as many politicians as I possibly can because they only come to you when they need something, when they need money, when they need my endorsement, when they need a photo op, when they need a favor. You know what? But they, they're scared of their shadow. They don't have the balls to come out and speak the truth and say what's right. You know what? People like them turn people like me into wanting to run this city. I've never thought ever about running for office. I don't like politics. I think it's a dirty thing. But you know what? When you're, when you're abused as much as I've been abused personally... And when, I, when you're accused of things that I've been accused, you, you'll say to yourself, what the hell? You know what? I was a commissioner at the White House for eight years, okay? I was vetted by the CIA, by the FBI, by you name it. You know, I am the, as clean as they come. I don't violate the laws. I am Dominican. I am proud of it. I'm an immigrant. And I want everyone to know that immigrants are good people. 
I'm an example of what an immigrant is. I've come to this country. My parents got here in the, in the early 1950s. They taught us the right thing. We do the right thing. We work hard. But don't try to take what's mine. Don't take away what I've worked for. Don't be afraid of an article in a paper where, because they can write whatever they want and you can't rebuttal it because they're not going to write your story. They're going to write the story that they want. You know, La Marina is, is the biggest heartbreak that I will ever have because I love that place. I lived it. I treated everyone that went there with love. I tried to make sure that everyone was taken care of. You know what? And I was targeted. I've done more for this city, for my community, than all of these politicians put together. Let me ask you, you also work with the taxi uh, commission. Yes, I do. Right, and you represent the I, workers. I represent about 30,000 taxi drivers in New York City. Right. I represent the United Bodegas of America that now want to sell marijuana because they're going to legalize marijuana and they want to leave them out. But you before, know? do you, is your affiliation to representing them causing some of this because you, is, are you have you become too powerful? But you, I don't have power. Well, I mean, if you I have had, to, if you represent thirty thousand people, if, listen, and you I, have a big business. If I had power, they wouldn't sh have shut the marina down. Power is in the mind of the beholder. If you think I'm powerful, then I am powerful. If you don't think I'm powerful, then I am not. You know, I've never walked around with a chip on my shoulder. If your grandmother calls me and says, "Mateo, um, uh, I'm being evicted. Can you help me? This landlord is not right." You know what? I'm going to go to your door and I'm going to call the landlord. I'm going to say, what's going but on you've here? you've done that for a lot of families. I, I do that for everybody. But I work is, that, for my community. is that why they're trying yeah, to neutralize so you? Yeah, they, they do. You know, it's fear. You know, people fear me. They fear me. Why? I don't know. I'm not running for office. If I wanted to run for mayor, I'd write a check for a few million dollars and I'd run for mayor. I wouldn't go out there asking nickel and diming people to give me a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there, a thousand dollars. No, I'd write a check and I'd run for mayor. You know what? And I would show this city how things should be run. No one should run this city that has not been in business. Are you running no, for mayor? No, no, I'm not running for mayor. Oh. No one should. No that's where we was going. It sounded sound sound like you <laughs> was about to gear up. No, no one, no one should run the city of New York if they've never had a job, a real job. Most of the politicians you look at, they've been politicians. They've been politicians since high school. Okay, they've never worked in their life. They've never paid rent. They've never paid employees. Well, that's not fair. The, you have, I mean, no, no, no it's, they've, it's they've true. Running, run, work, rent, running rent. for politics and working in a you know government agency is work. <laughs> really? I mean, I it's not what, labor. I, it's not labor no, intensive. No, no, but no, it's, you, you know what? It's creating uh, layers of laws that ninety percent of them don't make sense. We have six thousand. 6,000 well, laws. there is some bureaucracy. That's six, crazy. No, six... <laughs> Ebro. It's crazy. Before you open up your bodega, you have to read 6,000 things that could put you out of business. How does a city operate like that? You know what? You're offering Amazon $3 billion to come here to employ 25,000 people. Bodega owners employ 150,000 people. Why don't you give them a tax break? Why don't you allow them to sell marijuana when it's legalized? Why don't you allow them, you know, not issue them a ticket if a piece of paper flies in front of your store sanitation will come and write you a summons because there was garbage in front of your property? I mean, there's so many things that could happen that could go wrong. And that's really what, what is, is shameful in this city, that all the politicians, none of them, have held a job Outside of politics, so and if none they're, of them have run able to, business. if they, if the, if the days, the politicians or the different agencies in the city are able to neutralize a Fernando Mateo and take your influence away, you, you as a spokesperson for these people, now those people become less organized and they have less power. No, 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 they believe in me. You know, when I go out there for, I go out there for a cause. Um, the media supports me. 99% uh, minus the New York Post who hates me. Uh, why? I don't know. Maybe because I defended A-Rod at some point and they disagreed with me defending A-Rod. Yeah, um, uh, you know, it's it's like I'm there, I'm on their hit list. Well, a lot and, of, you know, the Post you know, is very uh, right-leaning. They, they have a big hit list. 
They have a big hit list. Yeah, so but I wouldn't you know feel what? Bad. I think I, you know, I judge you by your enemies. If the but post is your enemy, you're probably you, you all know, right do you with remember me. Yeah, exactly. Well said. Ebro, do you remember when I did Toys for Guns? Of course. In 93? Yeah. Do you know that I got a call from the New York Post? I, I was I was really like one of the five most I influential people in the country. I thought you did that in the, in the 2000s, too. No, no, it was. I did in the 2000s, but in other, in, no, no, in, in the 90s. I did I, in I wasn't Columbia here for that. and different I wasn't places. I was here for that. But do you believe that I got a call from the Post telling me, listen, we got some dirt on you. Um, if you don't come out and tell us about it, we're going to write a front page in the Sunday paper about you. And I said, what? I said, do me a favor. Whatever you can write, please write it because I, you will have the biggest lawsuit in your hands. You know, how Did could they write you... anything or no? No, no, They of didn't course have anything. Not. They, they, they were trying to see what if I fessed with... up and said, yeah, you know, I did this or I did that. I did the program at Rikers Island. People were saying that I was locked up. No, I was never locked up. I've never been in jail. You know, I've always been a righteous kind of guy. You know, I did Toys for Guns. That was pretty, pretty huge. You know, I organized the taxi people. I organized the bodega owners. People hate. Some people are just enemies of people who try to do the right thing. There, I, I've, I've uh, been, I'm convinced. I don't know, if, you know, Lauren Rosenberg. I've been convinced for a while as they change the names of areas of New York and it becomes more commercialized, right? Because well, we, we have a Target in, in Manhattan now. There's Home Depots. You know, these it, these big corporations are were there was a time when I was unheard of in Manhattan, it was, right? It was all small business. It was it was but all now small it's business. becoming corporatized. Well, New Yorkers, small business are going out of business. Yeah. And we employ 80% of all New Yorkers. Okay. A healthy community is a noisy community. If your community is is quiet. People are dying of cancer. People are dying of Alzheimer's. People are dying of loneliness. People are dying of depression. People are dying of all kinds of shit. You know? Our communities, everybody, they're broke, but everybody's happy. You know, people aren't complaining. You know, black people, I see them singing in the streets. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I, Spanish people, yeah, they're singing sure. in the street. They're doing their thing. New York has saucer become... Music, saucer music on 2 a.m. My right, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Listen. Where New, by? Yeah. It's going down. <laughs> New, New York has become the city that always sleeps now. Because if you try to stay awake, you will be fined, you will be shut down, you will be locked up, you will be accused of things you haven't done, you will be targeted. No, they're changing New York City for sure. Washington Heights and Inwood, I pray every day before I go to bed for all the business owners up there that own restaurants and lounges and clubs because they're all being shut down. You know, people, the gentrifiers that want to make money on the community don't want noise. They don't want, they think they're living in the suburbs. You know, the mayor should have the balls to get up and say, you know what, this is New York City. New York City does not sleep. If you want to sleep, go to, the, go, go to Westchester, go to Long <laughs> Island, you know, go to Connecticut. Don't be afraid. Not everybody likes Lincoln Center opera. Not everybody likes... Um, uh, uh, the museums. Not everybody likes to go lay out in the park. Well, the, remo know, the removal of culture in New York City, or at least pushing it to the outer boroughs, has been a thing for a minute. Yeah, you it's, know, Brooklyn's not the same, right? Now that now Washington Heights is never going to be the same. It's not going to be the same, and the people that are suffering the most are the people that have invested their life savings, people that have haven't been able to pay back. So, what's loans. the action item for the community? Wake up. Will La Marina, Don't move will, up. Will La Marina be there this summer? I believe so. I believe La Marina will be there. You know, I pray to God that, you know, what we built uh, will continue to uh, be open for people of color. Uh, I hope that whoever is listening to this show understands that if you had difficulties getting to La Marina, it wasn't our fault. It was Dominican Day Parade was our biggest day. I have videos here where they shut down every street all day and all night. They had over 60 cops, 60 on Dykeman Street alone to prevent anyone from getting to La Marina. How do you survive? How do you get your return back? How do you... Well, they don't want you to. They want you gone. They, they want us gone. But you know what? I'm hoping that the State Liquor Authority... Um, issues the license back because if they look at the 75 summonses that they issued that day, you will realize that maybe two of them or three of them had va validation. You know, but in the meantime, it cost a fortune 
to defend. He'll probably issue a fine of 50, 100, I don't know, $1,000. Whatever it is, it's a travesty of justice. You beat, you beat them in criminal court and they nail you at the SLA. The governor needs to wake up, needs to know and understand that every business in New York City that has a liquor license, from bodegas to liquor stores to restaurants to cafes, to all of these people are being persecuted by the state liquor authority. You don't have friends there. And the state liquor authority, the main guy is appointed by the governor. The main guy is appointed by the governor. The three people are appointed by the governor, the three commissioners. And they don't live in New York City. They don't live. One, I think one of them, the new one, the latest one that filled the seat after like three years, lives in New York City. And the liaison that was helping the community from the SLA, they're trying to get rid of him because he feels that he was trying to help our you know, the small businesses up in northern Manhattan. So it's like he's been being punished for trying to do the right thing. You know. So there's got to be some money that's being made from pushing people out. That's the bottom uh, line. Their people are making money. No question about it. Their property values are going to go up. If they don't see black or Dominicans, and I'm telling you, Dominican, well, Dominicans are black. Dominic, Y'all being reminded yeah, now. Yeah, Y'all just black and speak Spanish. You know, we all come, we all come from Africa, that's my right. brother, Talk from the him. motherland, Talk all of him. us, you know? So all I tell Dominicans is don't move out. Don't give up your apartment. Don't leave your community. You made Washington Heights and Inwood what it is. Don't allow any gentrifier to take what you have. You've worked for it. You live there. It's your community. Don't leave. Don't move. Yo, thanks you know. for your words today, Mateo. Thank and, and, listen, keep, and keep us posted on your next endeavors. Guys, too. man, thank you so much for giving me this airtime. You know, I, I feel that I'm leaving all my good energy here because I got a, a, an amazing amount of energy from you. Yeah, man. And we feed on energy. So thank you for having me. I hope that people that are listening understand that La Marina is a good place. It's a good place to be. But people don't want it. Certain people don't want it. So up. protect it. Value it. Exactly. Value it. Take care of it. Go there. It's the only, it's the most beautiful place in New York City. It's but amazing. It's, it's in an area that other people want. And that's the biggest problem that we have. Boom. Thank you.